Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Riggs and I'm joined today by my good friend down under, Jeff Blanchard. And joining us also is Harold Muliati. He's going to be running the video switcher mixer and helping in with the co-host functions today. So we are ready to go. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com, your training and video partner. And we're and back. We're hey. hey, Jeff, how are you? Good, thank you. And yourselves? We're good. We're and now I good. see for the start of the show, you've got a, you're doing a, a different microphone going back to the, the old traditional style microphone. The Shure KSM 42. This mm. is, uh, it's actually, it was always a very good mic. It just when I got it, I didn't like it at first. I, I thought mm. it didn't sound as good because it was a thousand dollar microphone. I went, I paid a thousand bucks for this. And then, you know, time went on. It's been like six years, at least, if not seven that I've had it. I pulled it out the other day and I listened. I go, mm, I like it now. But that could mm. be my voice changed or the preamps changed or something changed, which makes it sound good to me now. Oh, and for everyone watching out there, Rick does do a, a pretty um, a, a, a many-parted series where he compares th various microphones for voiceover. Mm. And we did do the KSM 42, I believe. We did. Yeah, so uh, we'll we'll link that so you can check. Yeah, it that out. was a mics for uh, e-learning thing we did, and I mean they're for anything, but yeah. we were just talking about e-learning in specific. Uh, this is a very good mic. It's got great articulation. It's it doesn't have any frills. There's no buttons. Not, I mean, it's just nice, clean microphone. And I, I've enjoyed the sound. It. A lot of people say it has a Neumann sound. That's mm. the reviews I've been watching recently. They compare it to the Neumann TLM-103. Uh, it could be. could be. I, I was listening to... Did I, did I send you the one from Booth Junkie? Um, yes, definitely. Yes, I watched that one. Delgado, it was very interesting. And it, it, I couldn't tell the difference. No, I couldn't. It was it was indistinguishable. Yeah. I thought he kept switching and switching, and I thought I was listening closely, and I could not hear any no. difference. <laughs> and 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 he had the TLM 103 for a thousand dollars, and he mm. had the KSM 32, the one below this one, mm. which is five hundred dollars. And I was going, you know, that sounds damn good. Um, and I kept looking at the thing changing 102, 103, KSM 32, 103. I'm going. He changed it. I can't tell. But the funny thing is, like, people think, I know somebody said to me, oh, but you've got a microphone. <laughs> and it said, but it's not always the same. And, and it's hard to explain sometimes when you, you might have one mic that does the job perfectly well. Yep. But some days it just doesn't sound right when you when you get in there. Like you said before, you've got the settings exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The room's the same. <laughs> But it just doesn't feel right in some ways, and some mics just have that different sound, don't they? And uh, and also, even just the shape of them, what depending on the job that you're doing with it, makes a big difference. Well, also the mics themselves have different capsules. Some are lower, mm. some are higher, some some are sparkling a little bit more, some are bassier. This KSM42 is meant to reproduce your voice as close to your voice as possible without introducing too much artifacting, too much bass, mm. too much anything. It's supposed to be close to what you sound like, and it does a good job. Cool. Uh, the TLM-102, same thing. It's supposed to be a very clear, articulating mic. It can be a bit bassy, but I've noticed recently that if I change my compression settings a bit, it becomes much more natural. Mm. And so, you know, it's really what kind of sound do you want you know, some mics, well, like, for example, I sent you a clip the other day of the NTG3. Yes, and that just sounded so good, and it was sounded, didn't sound as good the last time. You and did, and you know it? what I did that was different? I lowered the compression to a 2 to 1 versus about a 7 to 1. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to clean it up. Mm. But so. that's the thing is with a lot of audio where uh, we tend to all get stuck with You'll want to see a big line on your, your line on your audio, but you yep. don't need yeah. that. No, <laughs> you only need a little one. But you just, it's one of these things. That everybody says, oh, "I like to see a lot of sound as long as it's not peaking. That's fine." But you don't seem to like it when it's a, a low waveform. But that's what yeah. you've got to get. Well, it. The bigger you get it, the more sound you introduce. Mm -hmm. 
it, it just makes me think of you know the music industry and the loudness war where mm-hmm. everyone's trying to get these big fat uh you know waveforms where everything it's mm. they're just stuffing as much sound as they can but there there is there is a, a pleasant quality to having more dynamic range as you know like right. p- classical music nerds will mm-hmm. tell you that all the time oh we we need the dynamic range i need to i need to ha- have it as quiet as a mosquito and then and then you know as loud as an airplane or something but <laughs> well you know with with the thing about dynamic range and classical music when you get a really good recording and somebody's playing the triangle just a ding on a really good recording you can actually make that out in your headphone as a separate instrument and that's Mm. a quality recording when you can sony came out with super audio do you remember that jeff yes i do yeah it was was it yes yeah it failed miserably nobody bought the super audio except my dad my dad bought one Mm. uh i think he's the only person i know who actually bought one and and you could tell the difference when he played classical music recordings or jazz that was done on super audio. Wow. It, it sounded well, the, really impressive because every tonality, every bit came out of it. And that's the thing is, so the, the quality is out there, but it's just getting people to adopt it. Mm-hmm. I remember one of my first CDs that was properly digitally remastered and if you play that too loud on the, you'll blow the speakers mm. because yeah. it's so well engineered and it and it's just so quiet in the quiet spots but when it gets loud if you've got it too loud you'll just break your speakers well you know my dad's stopped making to... them because they kept damaging the speakers oh, because funny. people played them too loud what was that what was it just the normal the uh, in the early days in the cd's when they just digitally mastered them as they should be mm-hmm. in the top quality yeah. It's so perfect, just in general. don't do that now. It's too expensive. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting. My dad used to design speakers as a hobby, and he designed mm-hmm. some really large speaker cabinets and enclosures, and he built me a pair of speakers. They were tall. They were about four or five feet tall, mm-hmm. and they were based on a French design, and I forgot the name of what they were. It was a reflex something or other. The sound came out the back and then forward. It, it was, mm-hmm. it was a, a special huh. design that some French engineer did, and he copied it designed it and went it it just worked beautifully so he brings it over to my house puts it on my uh my panasonic micro component system back when and he goes ah, this is awful <laughs> that's your stupid system sucks <laughs> <laughs> so so after that i never really used them again <laughs> It's like, you know, it was like, I didn't have a better system. And then I had a Sony system, which was a tad better. No, he complained. They just, it ruined his speakers. So I wound up just never using them. I never had a system that was good enough for those speakers. And, and when you play the, when you played them on less good systems, it really didn't sound that good. No, so, and that, that's to, the thing is when yeah. you get, even these days, you get good quality home theater speakers mm-hmm. and people spend that, they say, but if you don't have the, sig- the good signal coming out, no. it's yeah. a waste of time. But then also they'll spend, you know, a couple of thousand on the speakers, but they'll, they'll spend $25 on cable. That's <laughs> Cabling right. Words, that's really important. You've got to it spend, is. get the, the real thick stuff and the proper quality to that's get right, the sound. That's right, with the gold, with the gold connectors the or, you know, and, mm. and that makes a big difference. And those cables that, are not cheap. And that makes a big difference in audio. Other, not like it does in like the HDMI debate, because yeah. usually no matter what you're doing, it's not doing too much difference on that. But with the other audio, the where it's traveling through, it, it can get interference and all that. So it makes a big difference on that. Well, you but know, that what sort ha- of dying away a bit now isn't it it is and and you don't find people buying stereo systems anymore no they're buying just the components for mic for home theaters and stuff and there are some good ones and bad ones but if you go to a best buy which you know on in their high-end part there aren't very many stereo systems and it's a shame because i guess people aren't really sitting and listening to it they're all on headsets listening to you know cell phones and ipods and ipads and while they're not bad I'll tell you. Mm. Jeff, do you have a Kindle? Yes, I do, yes. Okay. Have you ever played music on your Kindle? It really no, sucks. I haven't. It's awful <laughs> sounding. You know, I, I, I put really nice quality headsets on. I had, uh, what's the brand? Uh, it's an English brand, and the name just slipped. I don't use them all that often, but they sound good. They were like $500 pair of headsets. Mm. And you put those on, and it's like the Kindle had no power to even drive them. And then I put it on the iPad. The iPad sounded beautiful. And I was going, gee, what's wrong with these? 
and I put the Kindle on a different set of Bose headsets I have, sounded not too good. So the Kindle really isn't meant for anything other than reading you know, audio books. Mm. If you try to put good music, uh, it sucked. And then you go, well, what are people listening to? And they're, they're just listening to mobile devices for the most part mm. and getting maybe good sets, maybe not, because the good headsets really have a lot of resistance. People can't hear them as well. Something's not right because they're really resisting a lot of the noise. They're pumping up certain things and getting rid of the bad frequencies. And, and so you need good amplifiers for that. And so you know, we're not really seeing that anymore. So I don't know about you, but I don't listen through earphones or headphones music these days. I only like to listen through speakers. Yeah, that's nice too. If I'm listening, all I listen <laughs> through headphones and earphones is like podcasts or, or you know, okay. when I'm listening to things or audio books, if things like that. But I never listen to music. I, but, but I when just you don't listen think with it sounds as good. But when you listen with speakers, do your neighbors come over to listen with you because it's so loud? No, I don't have it. I'm I'm not a loud person either, but yeah. I'm on the corner and nobody hears it mm. anyway. So, but I'd, I'd not one like that has it booming loud because I said I don't want to deafen myself, and you just want yeah. to hear it properly. Usually, when it yeah. gets to that too loud, it's well, too much. you just it's just too much. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. as I said, st I'm still not a big one to sit down and listen for hours on end on music. But every now and then you will do. But uh, uh, I'm not. What I just can't see the illusion. Just listening to music all the time. Like well, when the only, people the other day, sit in front of their computers with their headsets on, I thought, I want to be concentrating on what I'm doing on mm -hmm. the computer and not listening to music. <laughs> right. Though there are some music I listen to when I write or when I, mm -hmm. I'm doing programming or anything. And that's kind of a slightly either classical or new age kind of music, which I find mm -hmm. just gets me into more of a zone. I'm more relaxed. I don't, I don't, I don't get as tired as quickly. I, I'm, the, the music is just sort of background noise, but it's relaxing. And mm -hmm. now the other day I, d I rediscovered Grand Funk Railroad, if you remember them oh. from the uh, 70s, mm -hmm. uh, 60s and 70s. But I mean, they're still playing now, I think. They're, they're pretty old, but they sounded great. I was listening, there's only a three man band, and they sound like that a full orchestra. They were playing so well. They filled up the audio scape so really well that it was just impressive. And that one, I have to admit, I turned up pretty loud. Even Leslie mm. came and goes, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm listening to Grand Funk Railroad. And she was going, okay. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, the thing is, when you listen to bands like that from the past and that, I've got a bigger appreciation of them now because you listen to them and you think, hey, they're actually playing the instruments. Yes. Whereas yeah. today... Me and you, if you if somebody can sing, if you can do this, you can get all electronically put do the things on the computer and have a real good sound. And you don't know, is it the band or yeah. is it just the technology playing? More often because, it's I mean, technology. I play, with my music, I can play really good. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeless, really, with skill. But it's just the, all the electronics uh, make up for a lot of it. Yeah, so. you're pretty good. I don't think you're that bad. You're, you're you do pretty <laughs> good music. I've heard you. But it mean it's still if you kick down the raw stuff when you just do it manually, uh, you know the in the older ones where the, I thought they were just so skilled with boon all the instruments and yeah. they didn't have all that <laughs> electronics to keep it perfectly in tune and perfectly in time. They just had to do it. So I don't and, know if you like, like Grand Grand Funk, but if you do, go and watch uh, Grand Funk live outside looking mm -hmm. in. Oh, okay. it, the, the, it's about a nine minute song the the guitar stuff and the bass player plays like a lead guitar on his bass half the time it's like oh. wow they're amazing to watch and the bass player just kind of looks up at people he's just playing he doesn't give a damn what they're doing well and uh, speaking of range that, that that's a song where it actually doesn't feel that long but they they'll do this thing where They'll be going really, really intense and loud, and then they'll kind of slow down and calm down, yeah. and it, it, it's it's this kind of quieter section, and then they'll, they'll yeah. build it back up again. And, and they go through yeah. three different drum beats. I mean, they they just go. They're amazing. They they are fast. They're slow, and they never stop. I, I guess it must be the different stations of the Grand Funk yeah. Railroad. And you know, when I was growing up, I really didn't like Cream that much. I think I was probably just a bit too young. And then I started listening to them a couple years back, going. You know, they were fun. They were only around for three years, but those Brits were really good. And and you had Ginger Baker, who was a drummer, who mixed African styles and other styles all into the drum, and it was just beautiful to listen to them. 
not to mention the bass player was was pretty, you know, Jack Bruce was was pretty amazing. He could sing, he could write, he could play, and and he was a classical guy who went rock. And Eric Clapton, mm -hmm. he can play anything on a guitar. Period. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. It was fun listening to him again. Going, they were good. One of them died already. And one of them is near death, I think. And and Eric Clapton still in his seventies looks pretty youthful. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. But it's also amazing with like going back then, like you was go back to the microphones and that, and a lot of the top ones that were still wanting to buy and sing, the yep. still the ones that they had from the seventies and eighties and nineties, they're oh, still yeah. out there. Some of them yeah. aren't they? And they're still yeah. doing a, the the top job. Yeah, so like, the, like the Sennheiser. How, how are the how are the bit of uh, technology has stayed around that long? You know, five years it's gone, but some of the microphones once mm -hmm. they get a good one in there it's still it's still there well you know the sure um, i'm sorry sure the sennheiser mkh 416 the, that's a mm -hmm. traditional shotgun microphone that was designed in 1973 oh, it is still a, a high selling microphone today I, I love the sound of that when you use that they've sent a few recordings on yeah. that and and it's so distinctive i don't know what but it's the only one that has like that foam on it but it's like a wedge so I know it's yes. the Sennheiser when you're mm -hmm. using it, because otherwise it could be any other shotgun mic. But you know it's yeah. got the the foam in a wedge type shape. Yep. But I've heard, yeah. and it's hard to that, get that it on mic. and off. It's tight, so you have to really kind of pull it to get it off. Uh, but they just have a wonderful sound. I had pro I have two of them. One of them had a problem with the transformer, mm. and that's when I found out that Sennheiser owns Neumann. Neumann. I never yeah. knew that. I went Sennheiser owns Neumann. Interesting. Because when you send it to Connecticut over here for repairs, it's to the Sennheiser Neumann Repair Center from oh, Sennheiser. Sure. Um, and, but they replaced it for free. It was a transformer issue. They, they replaced it. It came back sounding better than ever. I was going, wow. No questions asked. They were decent. And they took really nice pride in the work they did. You could tell. And that was the the from Booth Junkie. That's his preferred mic. Yes. I think he said was that he uses. That's one of his favorite ones as well. Yeah, well, he's going to be on the show. Oh, is he? Oh, good. he said so, he, what, on, we've been writing him notes for months, but it was to a wrong email. I guess he doesn't look at oh, that email okay. much. So we tried his LinkedIn email, and all of a sudden he responded within half a day. Oh, so that's, and that's he said, oh, I like the guy. He's really fun. He's natural. He's got a. Have, mm. have you heard his demo tape? If you go to his. Uh, uh, Mike Delgadio website. He's got a beautiful mm. demo tape. He has a nice voice. He does. He doesn't. It, but he's it, and he's so natural, though, isn't he? He's just. Yes. It's, it's not like one of these ones that it's just too perfect. It's yeah. great, but normal, and, and it's just a real great sounding voice. So no wonder he does so well not, at it. Not like that, that uh, pervy guy we know with the uh, Dutch kind of background. Who's we won't that? <laughs> the one who tells you how much he makes every week. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this week I made well, another ten thousand dollars. I'm just. Yeah, so I must hot. admit, he, he does have a good voice, so he can he do does. it okay. He but does. now, now I hear, and, it, and and I just love listening to his booth things because the way his booth set up, no matter his his audio is always perfect, yes. and he just does such a good job on that. And uh, but yes, as I said, I wouldn't be telling people what I'm making. So no, that was that's foolish and. Uh, I think we have Peter Baker on next week. Um, we uh, is it next when week? Do we have him on? You know, let me let me check. He's it coming back. up shortly. You remember Peter Baker from England? I can't remember now. So. He's the one I sent you the the master of voiceover he, class. Yeah, he oh yes, that's right. Yes, I, I love him. He's got yes. a good voice, and he seems yes. like a hell of a nice guy. He reminds me of you, mm. actually. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, we, I we, hope we have him I on. I saw that. We have what? Sorry. We have Peter on uh, next week, but it's on eLearn chat, right? He's on oh, eLearn. Okay. Oh, he's on eLearn chat. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it probably would be best for that because eLearn chat yeah. more with the voice. The, they're going to use voice over like narration. That cause, I think yeah, you know he, the 10 a.m. time was an easier easier for him to yeah. use in England. But take a listen to him when when he's on. I, he's probably going to be great. I, he just seems like a really nice guy. Have, have you watched some of his stuff? I haven't. It's got just it's just so natural, but he does a good job as well. I just like the and and as I said, he's he's been doing it quite some time. Probably yeah, before thirty it was something fashionable. years. Yeah, he's been on the yeah. BBC a lot and thirty something yeah. years doing this. So so he's been do he's been doing it when it was a job in a studio, not when right. you just sat at yeah. home recording right. and doing that. So when it was in, and I always respect those people who can go into a studio 
and do it because when I do any of my stuff and you do it, you can correct it. But just for sure. somebody to go into a studio, do a cold read, and you know maybe just do two takes and get it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so that they're the they're what I call professionals. They're truly that professional. Club. That's all they do. Like, they, they're like people, so people, good at it. people think it's because people get paid for it. Now there's a lot of people that get paid for things that are totally rubbish. <laughs> but it's like yeah. musicians. A true mu- musician, you give them yeah. a sheet a bit of uh, sheet music. They they've never seen it. it before. Yep. They take three seconds to look at it and they play it perfectly. That's yeah. a true, uh, yeah. trained, perfect music. Where they say, now, "Well, it's only what, playing the notes, what it says." And I don't know if you call them the same in Australia, but here they're called studio musicians. The studio mm. musicians can go into any studio session with any kind of music. They got notes. Mm. They got sheet music, and they're perfect. They're mm. amazing. Have you ever watched? I, I think you guys have it too. The Voice. Yes. Yes. Have you seen the studio musicians? On they can play any song, and they're incredible. Mm. They're just it's yeah, just, they're, yeah. Because it's like those ones, like you see on uh, I don't know, you know, like the 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 Saturday night shows, the talk shows. They usually have a group on there, and they play anything, don't yes. they? Yeah, they're when amazing. When the guests come up, they say, "Play this and do that." So yep. at the moment, they just got to play anything that that the host yeah. says to do, and yep. they just come up with that. And the thought. That is real, uh, real professionalism. Just to be able to and the, know you've got a repertoire, but usually yep. on those live shows, they get, they know what they're supposed to play. But all of a sudden, something comes up that nobody knows, and they, they all <laughs> know true. what to they say, oh, just do it. To, oh, one, two, three, four, and they just do it. Yep. So. Hey, uh, you know we haven't talked at all about what we really do here half the time on Tech Down Over. So let's talk a little bit about what came out this week or announcements mm. that came out that weren't supposed to come out. Uh-huh. Canon made a big, huge mistake. On the Australian website, you Aussies, you're, you're up to no good over there. <laughs> you Aussies, the Aussie Canon site accidentally released the pictures and everything of the Canon 90D that's about to come out. Oh, and, did that? That's and nice. And <laughs> also the new M6 mirrorless, the M6 Mark II, which actually looks pretty damn good. So they did that, and, and everybody's like, it's like people sit there watching these sites 24-7 because people caught it. And they captured mm. the, the site and they captured the videos and everything before they p- took it down. So uh, Harold's got a website that we can look at. We're not going to play it because it's their site. This yeah. is Canon Rumors. It was Canon Rumors that yeah. I, I pulled the... Because Canon actually put videos that were like spec videos for both of the cameras right, on, on pages, but they pulled them down by, I guess, Canon Rumors. They downloaded it already or something. So Yeah, so if, if you're watching the show, go down to the... to. Um, uh, the notes below, and we have a link to Canon Rumors, and you yeah, can you take can. a look at the videos. Uh, we don't want to show them because it's their videos, and yeah, YouTube yeah. gets really crazy now when you show something, even though even if we give them credit, which we would. Sometimes so, we're, we're even nervous to show another one of our videos. Hey, we can't even show our own videos. They'll <laughs> ding us for taking private... This was, <laughs> Uh, uh, they have. We've gotten we've gotten dings for, for actually showing our own stuff. It's like, oh, give me a break. We own it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so that was one thing. And some of the features of the M6 are interesting because people are going, why would you want to buy a 90D when the M6 does more? So very interesting. Uh, mm. And the M6 is probably going to be about $1,100 for, it does 4K. We don't know specs yet on 4K. It has a 32.5 inch sensor. A uh, 32.5 millimeter. Yeah, that's what megapixels. megapixels screen, yeah. Hello, which, sensor. Which yep. the, uh, I'm not sure if it's the same as the 90Ds, because that one also has a 32.5. Must be. Oh, no, APS-C. they were saying it is. It's the same sensor. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But Canon has no 24P on either of those cameras. Weird. Very weird. Yeah, th- it's something th- that happened. They did that also with the G7X Mark III, which uh, Rick's been trying out. Well, we we've been trying it out here at, at Relatecast, and that one goes down to twenty five p, but it doesn't do twenty four. But it doesn't do twenty four. I don't know what Canon is doing. Um, it's weird, and I you know I still like the Gen- the G seven X Mark three, but I'm debating about taking it back in. It, it has a lot of issues, and just waiting for the M six to come out, which looks very promising. I don't mind changing lenses, and I, mean, I don't mind having lenses small lenses it. on it. Mm. Yeah, but as I said, so so when is the G90 supposed to be released? Is that was uh, they that were just, saying September October time frame? 
mm-hmm. maybe sooner. Uh, so, so we I know it's ready because I've got all the, all the stuff yes, there for yeah. it. <laughs> so and and none of the major bloggers are talking about it because they've all probably gotten it. Gotten it, yeah. And then they'll probably go, oh, oh, oh. And when somebody's saying, oh, I'm not going to be there first yeah. because everybody will beat me to it and I can't say anything. <laughs> yep. That's probably what's going on right now. <laughs> yeah. I would hate to. I'm glad I'll never get involved in those things because I'd hate to know all that stuff and not be able to say anything. Right. I think that would be so horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a guy coming on next week on Life Edge. He is an author, writer, best-selling New York Times author, and uh, also top Kindle author, uh, mm-hmm. Richard Phillips, who's, I think he's a colonel in the U.S. Army, or retired colonel, U.S. Army, but he's also a nuclear scientist and an advanced computer scientist. He worked oh. at Los Alamos Labs, and he, he, like he says, I've got a top secret clearance. I can't say much. But it would be foolish to think we were alone in this universe, wouldn't it? And it would be foolish to think we developed all this technology by ourselves, wouldn't it? So he can't (laughs) say much, but he drops a lot of hints. And Mm. he's written a wonderful series of science fiction, which I absolutely adore, called The Roe Agenda, R-H-O, The Roe Agenda. Mm. Those books are mind-boggling. They're fun, they're exciting, there's adventure, action, you name it, it's got it. And the, the imagination this guy's got is, is amazing. So he'll be on the Life Ed Show just talking about those books and what his career has been and stuff. And we're going to try to get some answers out of him about UFOs and other stuff because he, he actually knows a lot about Area 51 and he was actually born in Roswell. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> oh so he's one of them. He's, he's one of them. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> But, uh, he's a creature of Roswell. <laughs> that's right. I saw an interview with him. If you're interested, there's an interview on him on Fright, the Fright Night podcast. This is about four mm. or five years ago, where he's talking about his book, The Second Ship, which is a really good book. I've just started reading that one. Um, very interesting stuff. And he talks about a lot of the stuff he, he mentions in his books is, is coming out. He said some of it's already come out. Some of it is imminent. He goes, the, the technology that's about to be released imminently is going to be mind-boggling. So, it, but yeah. it's just, uh, like you said, he's got, it must, might mean something there because when you think about it, in the last 50 years, we've, mm. the, uh, we've uh, increased the knowledge and the technology more than we have the, from the beginning of mankind. Like yeah, and humans, are, for and humans are dumb as stuff still. Years, did yeah. But now all of a sudden, you get everything so, yeah. in the last 50 years. And I still maintain most humans are dumb as dumps if you look at the way they behave and act and the problems we have in this world. And yet, you've got some <laughs> geniuses running around, and did they really figure all this out, or did they have a helping hand? Mm. Yeah, but sometimes we'll find out. I think it might be just the brain. You just can't explain the brain how some of the, some people can just type on a keyboard and create every, anything yes. they want. Yep. And then and it doesn't matter how much training they get. They never had any training, but no. it doesn't matter. They're they can brilliant. Just, it's just natural to them. They just say, well, I'll yeah. just sit down. I'll just do it. Yep. And I just don't. <laughs> it's just like there's that quirk in, yeah. in the, that, that person doing it. It's just amazing. Yeah. Now, one other thing we wanted to talk about was, for example, cell phones. A cell phone versus a mm. one-inch camera. At first, I was trying to justify keeping my Note 9 or getting a Note 10 from, mm. from Samsung, and I was going, you know, the cameras are really good on them. So I took some shots. We didn't bring them today, but I took some videos and some pictures, and they look good. And then when I compare them against a PowerShot G7X Mark III, mm. they don't look that good. Yeah. It, it's interesting. A one-inch sensor makes a huge difference from a third of an inch sensor on, on a cell phone. The They're thing is, though, the there. thing that I hate with them, with the the Samsung and the range of phones, their pictures and videos look perfect on the phone. Yes. And yeah. you see, it looks like, a, oh, why would you want anything different? But when you play it on a normal thing, it it's doesn't. Awful. It's awful. But on the phone, it just does something. The quality is, and most people just well, show it on the phone, but it well, looks no, perfect. Well, no, here's the real reason. Because this, the phone has an OLED screen, just like the new iPhones. Mm. So as a result, OLED looks very saturated, very beautiful. It's got mm. great color vibrance. And, and then you go on a regular IPS or some other kind of monitor, and it's like, ew, this looks like crap. And it does. It, it just doesn't look as vibrant. Though, like we were talking about earlier, a lot of people have mentioned this, Samsung in particular really oversaturates and oversharpens images. 
Mm. So as a result, it looks really bright and sharp on an OLED monitor. But when you then put it, and it looks good on a TV too, because the TVs have a pretty good brilliant, you know, brightness to them. But you put it on a computer monitor, it doesn't look that good. Yeah, and mm. because of the huge amount of sharpening, if you have certain kinds of details in your picture and you zoom in, it looks like a microscope image of worms. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of kind of scary. <laughs> so, were we talk, talking about anything else, Harold? Oh, uh, those were the things we were... That was it. So you got 23 color. minutes of mics today and about seven minutes of pictures. Hey, we love mics here. But we do love our mics. Mm. So what do you think, Harold? Yes. Do you like the KSM-42? Not Harold. Um, Jeff. Jeff, yeah, yeah I, I like that too because I said I'm not, I don't have to have a new microphone, but I want to buy a new microphone. So I'm thinking of the Neumann, uh, was it TLM 103? Is it TLM? TLM 102. Oh, 102. 102 oh, the three, because, the three yeah. costs more by about two, three hundred dollars. But I, yeah. I, when I listened to, uh, again, Delgadio, I think, did that. He did the 102. Mm. I couldn't tell the difference. They sounded about the same. Mm. Um, mm. And, and I've heard some other people, and they're about the same. So for me, for about the same, the the uh, the one hundred and two costs two hundred dollars less or three hundred dollars mm. less. So I'm okay with that. And and it's a nice small. It's a little. Yes, it is small. Uh, a nice small, but I mean, I don't mind that. It doesn't matter. No. But I do like the way the shores look. I just like that design. Yeah, I've always yeah. liked that one in, in the shores. And this is the so. shock mount that comes with it, and it's it's pretty nice. And you notice mm. if I'm over here. Oh, by the way, this has a two two uh, uh, diaphragms. Oh, okay. So you've got one, so that, then they join them to make for a crisper sounding voice. Mm. So you've got two large diaphragm condensers right into one, oh, which that, is different. And then you said that, and that's about $1,000, that one. About but 950 the, uh, something like that. Yeah. And all of it, roughly, you know, most of the really decent ones, are, you know, you can get ones thousands more, but it's usually about $1,000. Yeah. Like for Even 500 Your Sennheiser, usually. the 416, that's about $1,000, isn't I, it, I as paid well? 950 for both of mine, and mm. literally a year before I got the first one, it was 1500 oh. So they went down almost 600 bucks, and I don't know why. They didn't have to. Cause, now, I well, think the reason, I think it's probably like, the, like now, like 10, 15 years ago, who bought microphones? Nobody. Only studio people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, but now, you know, pretty much every home YouTube wants a decent sound. It's buying that's a, right. a three or four hundred. They're not just buying a fifty dollar mic. They want yeah. that better quality. But the thing that really does annoy me is sometimes you see these fifteen year old, sixteen year old YouTubers just mm -hmm. throw a mic on any old rubbish, and the sound so damn good. I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even. And you think the rain. They're not in a treated room. They're in a no. But it just said, and I thought, how do they get that when you try hard? Right. <laughs> it's not even just YouTubers. It's you know people playing playing video games, and they want a nice microphone so that they can insult people online. <laughs> Nicely, yes, that's right. They said they, I want them to be able to hear every word of my abuse clearly yeah, as yeah. anything. Oh, so. gosh. gosh. But anyway, you know what? I don't know. Would I get the KSM-42 over the TLM-102? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send you a recording this weekend. I've been wanting to try this. The 42 mm. versus the 102. Mm. And see if you can tell differences. Well, you do that. I'll I'll be interested in that because yeah. I still want to have the one hundred and two, but I like that. But I like the design of the one hundred and two. Yeah, just as nice. It's but very it's small. It's well. They're like both very either. well built. And I know what you will say. Get both of them. <laughs> Get both. You know what? Life is short. You might <laughs> then you as well won't enjoy have to it. Worry about it. So. You might as well and enjoy it. Jeff, you've only got one life to live. Live it to the fullest. That's, Get that's the best right. mics you can. Yeah. <laughs> And that, I always like Mark, uh, Mike on well, the booth junkie. His uh, his closing closing phrase. He said, "Now just get out there and buy a mic and record something." Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he just he just gets you really. He said, "Don't care, just buy it and and record something great." Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he'll be that. fun. He'll be fun to have on. Yeah, I've got him slated for more our show because he's more techie. Hmm. Yeah, but I've been seeing when he moved house and just uh, moved, uh, creating his new uh, studio and that. Yeah. So that was quite interesting. So he builds his, you saw him, he built his own booth. Yeah, he did. He did that. So, and I thought, and he said he wasn't that good at us. And like I said, I know I, I would, the whole house would have fallen down if I. 
<laughs> Same here. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> you, you know what? For you people watching in the audience, Jeff and I, we're both video guys. We like video. We like you know audio. We like uh, cameras. And he came over to our house one time. He was visiting from Australia. And he and I are sitting on the floor like two 10-year-olds. Got our legs spread out. And we're playing with all the gear that we had just gotten. <laughs> and then we tried to get this seven foot reflector we got a special deal on i think three reflectors mm. and it took us 45 minutes to figure out how to close the darn <laughs> thing how to fold it back together so my wife's looking at us and goes you guys are pathetic here she gives us a video of what was she like a 20 year old 18 year old little girl she's young yeah. and what she just she goes, was about 12 i think she was she wasn't she, even she that old really she young and she just folds girl. it in, what five seconds <laughs> yeah, and she and she wasn't tall either. Like we no. thought, oh, we've been, we've got the. She just said, just grab it like this, twist yeah. it like this, ah! yeah. and oh, and, <laughs> and we followed it and we got it done. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it took us a while, but you know, even watching, it's like, how the heck did you? So well, we finally did fun- it, and my wife shaking her head, going, "You guys are useless." It's you know, the, the funny it, thing- it was a video. You don't know how many takes she had to do before that. That's true. Uh, that is true. But man, yeah. that last take she did was good. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you should have seen us, though. We had it all bent up. Then if you let go, and then it nearly knocked us out. Decapitated. It exploded back up yeah. because we didn't get it right. And <laughs> it, it was funny. We were close a couple of times, but man. Yeah. We and getting, then we brought it into the office. The and, and, was getting close to just cut it up into a thousand pieces and yeah. just stuff it back into the And then the remember, bag, we brought it back into the office, and Clark just folds it in like one minute. We're like, yeah, like, oh, we just do it like that. Yeah, so you know, we're very good at some things, but putting that stuff back together, no. Anyway, well, we, we went on for 38 minutes today, 39 oh. almost. No, 38. So have a good one, Jeff. Uh, maybe Are you going to be around tomorrow? Yes, I will be, yes. I'll, I'll try to give you a call tomorrow night. Yeah, okay. About what, 9? My time? Yep, that would be fine. Yeah, so okay. that's about 2 my time, I think. Okay, yes. hopefully by then I can record that thing and I'll, sh- I'll show you the sample mm. difference between one and the other just to see if you know we can sense it. Mm. That'll be fun. All right. Okay. Well, for all you people watching in the audience, we hope you enjoyed our microphone talk today because we do love our microphones. And uh, keep your eye off of Canon. They're doing stupid stuff again. Mm. <laughs> it's what they do. Harold... You have a great weekend, Jeff, you too, and we'll see you guys and girls next time on Tech Down Over. Take care, everyone. Have a good weekend. And thank you. Bye for now.